Thank you all. Now I call upon Dr. Sushma Pednekar, Associate Professor, Department of Microbiology, to conduct the next session, which is Hardas Pathak Oration. A very good morning to all. Hardas Pathak Oration is the most prestigious award of the Maharashtra Chapter Conference every year. It is awarded in the name of Dr. Usha Hardas and Dr. Ashok Pathak. Every year, this oration is awarded to the eminent microbiologist. In 25th Maha Microcon Conference held in Nagpur in year 2019 conference, it was, uh, this particular award was nominated to Dr. Uma Tendulkar. I request Madam to come on the dais. Congratulations, ma'am. I request audience to give her a round of applause. It's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Uma Tendulkar. Madam is retired as professor, Department of Microbiology, Lokman and Tirak Municipal Medical College and General Hospitals, Mumbai. She is undergraduate from Nagpur University and MD from Mumbai University. Her primary field of interest is mycology. She set up a mycology section from the scratch at LTM Medical College in, 18, uh, in 1984. She has many original contributions in microbiology, to name few, described simplified staining technique for fungi. She composed a new culture medium, tobacco agar, which is being evaluated by many researchers. The tobacco agar has been listed in the novel laboratory techniques by Dr. Gugnani in the book, Progress in Mycology. Madam has achieved many awards and honors like Hargobin Fellowship in 1999 at CDC Atlanta, USA, and awarded Professor S.C. Agarwal Oration at 35th Microcon Conference of IIM in year 2011. She is a member of many national and international bodies. Madam has on organized many mycology workshops at LTM College. She has presented 100 scientific papers in national and international conferences. She has 61 national and international publications, research publications, principally in mycology. Madam has also published two manuals related to mycology. Sorry to cut short your CV, ma'am, uh, and congratulations again. Now we will move, uh, proceed for the felicitation ceremony. Uh, Dr. Pata could not attend today's function because of health issues. He requested IMM past president and ex-dean of Solapur Medical College, Dr. Vilas Jahagirda, to present a scroll of honor. So I request Jahagirda, sir, to join the stage. I have been told that uh, Tendulkar Madam has requested our organizing secretary, Dr. Karya Karte, to invite Dr. Leena Devdar for this ceremony. Dr. Leena Devdar is Dr. Tendulkar's teacher and mentor. Madam did her MD in 1964 from TNMC Mumbai. She is pioneered microbiology department in Lokmanya Tilak Municipal Medical College and worked as HOD till 1992. Madam has received Lifetime Achievement Award of IMM in year 2007. I request Dr. Leena Devdar, Madam, to kindly come on the stage. Welcome, ma'am. Now I request Dr. Jahagir Das, sir, to hand over a scroll of honor to Dr. Uma Tendulkar, ma'am. Now I request, now I request Dr. Lina Tendulkar, Madam, to do the honor by presenting medal to Dr. Tendulkar, Ma'am. For Tendulkar, Madam, it's almost like getting a cherry on a cake. She's receiving a Hardas Patak oration from her own mentor and teacher, Dr. Lina Devdhar, Madam.
I request uh, Jahagiridhar sir to say a few words. Respected Devdar Madam, I am very privileged to stand before you here for many reasons. Number one, the award which is in the name of Dr. Mishesh Usha Hardas. She has been my godmother, my mentor, my guide. And whatever life achievements and accomplishments that I could achieve in the period of my 51 years of microbiology career is only um, a reflection of her blessings towards me. And I owe entire my microbiology journey to Dr. Mrs. Ardas. And Dr. Pathak, myself and Dr. Pathak were students from the school time. And it was so coincidental that we joined the Department of Microbiology by common order as lecturers then. We were promoted as readers in the same GR. We were promoted as associate professors in the same GR. We were promoted as professor in the same GR. And we were also made promoted as deans also, and this is how we are. We have been running hand in hand in our journey of our services towards government of Maharashtra. Very important thing which you may not be knowing. Dr. Mrs. Lina Devdar has been the first gem for the state of Maharashtra because she is the first president of Indian Association of Medical Microbiologists, and. Subsequently, many people followed her and have become presidents of Indian Association of Medical Microbiologists, but she is the one who was the pioneer president of Indian Association of Medical Microbiologists, and for which I must uh, I, I request you for a very big applause. <laughs> Madam Devdar has been a role model my, my, my medical microbiologist at times whenever People were not knowing what are the PPLOs and mycoplasma. She had the international publications in that domain. And she was known all the world over for ex her excellent contributions in the field of mycoplasma. And we have seen her mentorship. The result is in form of Uma. Uma has been a scholarly person right from her student days from IGMC Medical College, Nagpur. And I belong to Nagpur for my education. So she, she, we are compatriots. And therefore, I have a special privilege to stand before you here and congratulate personally Umaji for her this award. Uma has been an outstanding mycologist. And she has made the entire Maharashtra proud by her mycology contributions. She's known all, all over. And especially for her tobacco agar, a novel contribution in the field of medical mycology. She has, obviously it has been told that she has produced manuals and we have yesterday seen the importance of genomic analysis and genomic sequencing. What is the impact of the new technology and the new domain on the young minds? And we are here, assembling here, for the purpose of that impact. And I'm sure that listening to her today will be another impact in the direction towards the growth of the young microbiologists. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, sir. Now I request Dr. Lena Devdar, madam, to speak a few words about madam. Can I sit and talk? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, good morning, everybody. Right in the beginning, I would like to thank our organizing secretary for inviting me for this session. Now this year, Hardas Pata Coration Award has been given to my colleague, Dr. Uma Tendulkar. Now, actually, I worked in Lokmanya Telak Municipal Medical College as HOD for 15 years. And in all those years, we had the very good team working with me, and Uma Tendulkar is one of them. We work together every day because uh, there were hardly any transfers like the government colleges, and therefore we remained for quite a long time together. We had a very nice team, 
and uh, Dr. Tendulkar was very sincere. She was very methodical in her work. Right from the beginning, she showed interest in mycology, and therefore she ha she was given everything, whatever she needed to set up the mycology lab in our department, that is LTMMC Cyan. Now in Cyan, I am very proud to say that our department was really excellent and uh, we had a very good team. All the people were interested in the work. Not only that, every day we used to meet at about 11 o'clock. We used to discuss about the different work going on in the department. We used to discuss about the practicals, what we are going to teach the people who are going to take the students. And all these things were discussed, even sometimes some personal problem or any technician problem or anything was there, it was discussed with everybody. And therefore it was a very good team and it was always something like a get together every day at about 11 o'clock. And we used to have tea of course after that. Dr. Tendulkar, she always was helpful to the students, postgraduate students. Not only that, but she also helped me at one stage when I was writing a book on AIDS in Marathi. I uh, started writing in Marathi because I have never wrote before, but I thought of writing because there was no book on AIDS in Marathi at least that time. And therefore I decided to write a book. So I had uh, lots of problems, but there were two people who were always helping me. One was Dr. Arvind Godbole who was a physician, well-known physician from Bombay, and he was a friend. So he always, he almost, uh, uh, he uh, went through each and every word of the uh, chapters which I wrote and always gave me the suggestions. And the second person was Dr. Uma Tendulkar. She also gave me very good suggestions and therefore it was a book which was published in Marathi for the first time on AIDS and that book got a prize from Marathi Vidyan Parishad. <laughs> Afterwards, of course, I wrote in English also, but I'm more proud about the Marathi book because there was hardly any book at that time. Now, in our department, we always used to have conferences, seminars, and all those things were going on. The seminars used to be almost every week, and the postgraduate students, the MSc, PhDs, those who were registered with us, everybody used to participate and everybody was given some topics to prepare. So that was a very nice atmosphere. It was scientific atmosphere. It was a friendly atmosphere. And everybody used to participate. Everybody used to be present, give comments, give suggestions. And therefore, that was a very nice team and nice atmosphere in the department. That is what I would like to point out. And Dr. Tendulkar was always there to help everybody. She would give very nice suggestions and um, uh, they were appreciated by all. So I'm very happy that I have worked with her for a long time, almost more than 10 years, 10 to 12 years. And uh, she is here getting the award. I'm very happy that she's getting the award and I congratulate her for winning this award and request her to give her oration. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, now I request Dr. Uma Tendulkar to proceed for the Hardas Patak oration, titled Mysterious Mycotic Challenges to Microbiologist. First of all, I will like uh, to thank the organizers for giving me this wonderful opportunity to attend this uh, uh, prestigious uh, conference. I also thank my seniors, my teachers, my, uh, the stalwarts in microbiology, Dr. Uh, Vilas Jagirdar, Dr. Ashok Pathak, Dr. Uh, Pratibha Narang, and all my senior teachers. Dr. Uh, Leena Devdhar is my guru, so she has the uh, prime um, honorable position in my heart all the time. I thank everybody for giving me this wonderful opportunity. So we are all aware that uh, there is an unprecedented rise in the number of fungal infections all over the world. 
uh, uh, this is mainly because of the increasing populations of immunocompromised hosts as well as those with uh, undergoing therapeutic and various uh, investigational modalities uh, leading to opportunistic fungal infections. There, this jet age moves people from one uh, part of the world to another and thus they get exposed to newer fungi which are exotic. So with this increase in the number of fungal infections, the challenges to microbiologists, not only microbiologists, but clinicians and radiologists are increasing. So fungi are very weird. They uh, have an uncanny habit of uh, appearing where they are least expected. We have this experience of uh, the surge of mucormycosis with COVID just recently. The subcutaneous and systemic infections have non-specific signs and symptoms, what we clinically think to be tuberculosis or even microbiologically as tuberculosis or a atypical mycobacterial infection turns out to be fungal. Uh, could be sporotrichosis or histoplasmosis, some such. Corticosteroids tend to modify presentations and uh, an example of that is tinea incognito and new fungal members are, uh, are being added almost every other day to add to our woe. Mucormycosis, that sudden upsurge of infection was thought, uh, hypothesized to be right from the contaminated oxygen to humidifiers and whatnot. But it was found that almost 75% of these uh, patients had diabetes mellitus as the underlying uh, risk factor, as well as 50, almost 50% 50 of them also had had um, corticosteroid, both known risk factors for mucormycosis. And almost 50% of the cases uh, reported in the world were from India. Uh, Many times what happens is dermatophytosis, infections like dermatophytosis, they are mistaken for dermatitis and patients are advised steroid applications. These steroids suppress the inflammation, irritation, patients feel good, but the fungi are flourishing faster than ever in the skin. And the whole clinical picture over a period of time changes. It doesn't look like dermatophytosis anymore. So a high degree of suspicion is required to even think of dermatophytosis and send appropriate sample for uh, fungal culture. Fungi are also very funny in that when you most expect them, like patient is having uh, typical uh, signs and symptoms, radiological signs are all there, but you sim simply don't tend to recover the fu fungi from the blood or whatever clinical, relevant clinical samples. We know of the famous uh, false negativity in blood cultures in patients who have established uh, invasive fungal infections. Causes are many, right from faulty collection of blood to faulty processing or uh, no, uh, not using fungal specific media so uh, these are the various and several other causes for false negativity. With these problems now, there is a need for uh, other tests like PCR um, assays and uh, the DNA uh, analysis, sequence analysis, which are required for all these uh, samples, especially the blood cultures, respiratory cultures, etc. The uh, cornerstone or the uh, main uh, area for diagnosis for uh, of uh, fungal infections have always been uh, always relied on the direct microscopy and culture as well as histopathology again false negativity because of improper uh, sample n improper processing sometimes it is due to fungi uh, themselves being less in the sample and also uh, an inexperienced observer may miss them. So all these challenges we need to overcome to uh, 
uh, and develop our future strategies. So there should be a high uh, suspicion of fungal disease, especially when uh, presentations are unusual. And it begins right from the collection of samples for transport of samples. These sub uh, subjects themselves are um, uh, uh, can uh, uh, be discussed in uh, f uh, two or three lectures. And also processing of samples is um, important. The time between uh, collection and processing should not be uh, more than two hours ideally, but if more time is uh, expected, then the samples can be kept in the refrigerator. But not all samples. Some samples like CSF, body fluids, blood, tissues, they need to be kept at 37 degrees centigrade if more than two hours of delay is suspected. And for tissues, to avoid drying, you can add some sterile saline. Incubation temperature, we know at room temperature, fungi are to be incubated at room temperature, but what is this room temperature? It varies from uh, part, one part of the country to other, from one area to another area. So we need to have a cooling incubator set at 26 or 27 degrees centigrade for incubating at room temperature. Also, uh, we need to keep, because uh, fungi need moisture for gro uh, growth, so we need to keep a bowl filled with uh, cotton and uh, water inside the incubators for the fungi to grow well. So all these facts, small facts, but they are very important in uh, recovering fungi and having a productive uh, uh, microbiology um, worker. We need to differentiate artifacts from fungi because direct examination uh, is so important of clinical samples. Reporting, what to report, what not to report. We all have an experience that almost 98% of the respiratory samples, especially sputum, will grow candida. So are you going to grow, uh, are you going to report all these candida to the clinicians? Is it in meaningful? Are you going to speciate this candida species? That will be a waste of manpower and laboratory resources. So what do you do? You have to compare the primary uh, smears, primary wet mounds, KOH mounds, and look at the quality of the sample. And mostly you will find that they are all upper respiratory samples and your candida has no significance in such samples. So what you do is just rule out cryptococcus and report it as each grown, not cryptococcus. So your reporting also should be a little judicious and uh, meaningful to the patients, as uh, Dr. Nina Nagdev has amply described. Infections in special hosts, we all know that certain diseases are more prone to getting fungal diseases than others diabetes mellitus, transplants, etc. Uh, species of fungi are also increasing in all these samples. They are emergomycosis, prototheosis, chlorellosis, previously unheard of or less heard. And we need to be abreast with all these infections and their morphologies and uh, how they look in histopathology, what are the culture media to be used just to uh, be aware and recover them. Uh, you can diagnose only what you know and you can find out only what you look for. Now this patient came to us. Um, he was a eight year old boy from Siddharth Nagar UP and he came with just a swelling of the arm and one sinus. And he gave a history of being operated one year back Probably incision and drainage was done, but uh, we are not sure because there were no documents. And just see what, uh, now this is post-op uh, uh, presentation. Now, in surgical, op op uh, uh, surgical uh, um, uh, operation, uh, look at this uh, amount of fungal elements seen in the cyst between the radius and the ulna, it was almost loaded with fungal grains. And in KOH examination, it showed uh, a typical brown, brown grained mycetoma.
no, point, a point. Point is on already. Ah, but it's not showing there, no? Let it be. Okay. The point. Uh, where is the point? Leave it, leave it. Leave. Uh, so brown grain mycetoma due to Madurella mycetomatis, a very unusual presentation. It didn't show the tumefaction, sinuses, and uh, grain discharge as uh, is expected. It was not even pheohyphomycosis because we didn't see any fungal, uh, pigmented fungal elements in the tissues. It was not even a uh, pheohyphomycotis cis or a subcutaneous uh, pheohyphomycosis. So uh, a very funny presentation of mycetoma, very different. This pain patient was from Ranchi Jharkhand. He came with oropharyngeal uh, ulcerative, nodular ulcerative lesion and uh, hoarseness of voice, um, difficulty in deglutition and uh, radiologically, he showed the, there, there was a query retention cyst and or could be a polyp that was thought radiologically. And this is the, um, this uh, lower down picture is that of um, uh, post-treatment. Now biopsy was sent to us and it grew conidiobolus coronatus. Even primary preparation showed aseptate hyphae and conidiobolus coronatus was grown from this. And you can see the, uh, the papillated uh, exterior of this conidia by means of which the fungus gains its name, uh, coronatus. The patient was put on potassium iodide and itraconazole and uh, the um, lesions, they disappeared after a couple of months, but after a year when he came back, he had fresh lesions on his um, uh, labial, uh, lab, uh, the upper lip and al also on the nose. Now this patient, another uh, patient, our uh, dermatology department, Dr. Hema Jerajani uh, was the head at that time. She, and she was always enthusiastic and insisted that her residents send all uh, non-typical as well as typical fungal, uh, uh, suspected uh, fungal in, uh, infections to the microbiology for a confirmation. And she f sent scrapings from the nose of this patient on which a patient had erythematous and scaly lesions. So scrapings were sent for fungal culture. And uh, it's a, a practice that in our mycology lab, we, uh, we do the, um, uh, all stainings, like gram staining, then we do the wet mount to see the cellular composition, we do KOH mount, we do nigrosine mount for all samples, relevant samples. And uh, uh, sometimes special staining, like uh, the simplified GMS, which uh, I have published earlier for uh, pneumocystis and all those fungi. So we had this, uh, it's not being seen, uh, maybe because of the color. So malassezia like is seen in um, gram staining and this was a case of malassezia dermatitis known to produce very severe infections also, especially in patients with AIDS and uh, even systemic infections in neonates on, uh, and patients on total parenteral nutrition because of its high lipid at, uh, attraction. Patient suspected of actinomycosis. We thought it was uh, um, actinomycosis of the lung affecting pleura and chest wall. But after surgical exploration, when we got the biopsy, we saw grains of nocardia brasiliensis. So this was nocardia brasiliensis mycetoma presenting in this way on the chest wall. So I underline that there should be a high suspicion of uh, fungal disease in all such cases. Another area where uh, this high suspicion is needed is the invasive fungal disease, where, which are difficult to diagnose. There are 
Non-specific signs and symptoms, uh, blood cultures are mostly negative. Uh, clinical, uh, they're critical clinical conditions. Um, because of that uh, underlying uh, condition, uh, many times invasive investigations or biopsies, etc., are not possible. Even bronchoalveolar lavage may not be possible in such patients. So. Um, because f there is fear of bleeding, complications, etc. So uh, we need to have some different tests for diagnosing these patients. Direct microscopy, histopathology are golden uh, uh, tests, but m sometimes they may be inconclusive because of the uh, patients being on heavy medication like steroids or antifungals. There is a need of rapid diagnosis and treatment, which is life-saving in these patients. So we cannot waste time till culture results are obtained, especially the um, slow-growing fungi. Now, collection of proper specimen. Each of these steps are important. If the resident, dermatology resident, or whoever is collecting the clinical sample from uh, dermatology department is not aware what to collect, like in um, uh, black dot uh, ringworm of the hair. One needs to collect the scrapings from the scalp. Whereas for gray patch ringworm, you just pluck the hair with tweezers. So they, the, the residents, the juniors need to be trained in all this for a fruitful result which you can give. Technical staff, if they don't know what to process in this hair which is sent to the lab, you are going to miss the diagnosis. So this is white pedra. You can see the nodule here. And if the nodule is uh, seen in QH, you will see the good package, packing of uh, trichospo uh, trichosporon is here. Trichos this was trichosporon mucoidus species. You can speciate the trichosporon. And uh, this has now been uh, transferred to a new genus, uh, cutaneo trichosporon. Now these changes are forever happening and you have to be really updated with all this knowledge. Collection of proper specimen, sometimes uh, the grains of uh, mycetoma are so tiny, it's difficult to even see them, uh, leave aside picking them up and uh, washing them and um, processing them. Now, we have to remember that in mycetomas, the grains which are accumulated on the mouths of the sinus grains are many times negative because they are non-viable uh, fungal elements. So we need to insist on curating species. We thought this could be rhinosporidiosis with the pedunculated mass, but uh, see what was seen in QH was a whole lump of uh, bacilli. And in gram staining, you can see <coughs> gram negative bacilli and culture grew uh, clepsilar rhinoscleromatis. So presentation is the similar one, but uh, no, it was not rhinosporidiosis. Another of our patient with rhinosporidium. Now, this organism is very easy to detect. You can see them in KOH, saline, whatever preparation you do. This is GIMSA staining. Bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, again, importance of a good specimen. Now, always you will find that bronchoalveolar lavage is watery with some uh, few flakes floating. So, you have to pour it in a petri dish and process the flakes, and they will always be fruitful. Here you can see amongst all the inflammatory cells, you can see a uh, fungal hypha here. Uh, in hypha, you can see it is a um, septate hypha or and culture grew aspergillus flavors. So a good specimen will give you good result and you have to monitor also how the technician is processing, advise something to her, her or him. Uh, artifacts we need to identify from uh, fungal elements and these type of uh, coil structures or wavy fibers you always see, you will always see in skin uh, biopsies and lung biopsies. But, and some juniors, unexperienced uh, workers may report it as fungal elements seen. But they are not fungal elements. Here another artifact, uh, just a tubular uh, uh, extension which looks like a fungal filament but lacks all the internal uh, details. Brown pigment like this you must have observed in uh, um, ophthalmic preparations. 
in KOH mount. Now this is just the iris pigment and not any pigmented fungal elements. So again, normal tissue of cornea, all fib fibers and uh, filaments you will see, but they are not fungal hyphae. Blood vessels many times are uniform and nicely branching and all, and may be mistaken for fungal elements. So you have to hunt for fungal hyphae in the clinical, because I believe, I'm a strong believer that you can really, this uh, direct examination of clinical specimen is highly underrated method of a rapid diagnosis of fungal infection. And you can see the fungal hyphae if you take a little effort. There, there are many bubbles over here which are artifacts, but the fungi seen are unmistakable. In, you can increase the sensitivity of your uh, direct examination by using fluorochromes. Um, you can see the, uh, uh, the mostly used fluorochrome now is calcofluor white, but uh, we have used Congo red long time back in 1980s and that uh, stain too gives good result. Gram staining may not be very efficient in staining fungi. Um, Many times the background is stained, and uh, but the morphology of mucormycotic hyphae is very evident. So processing of samples, I just want to touch upon very few points here. Uh, at least two ml of uh, fluid should be collected. For urine collection in catheterized patient, we must clamp the hub of Foley's catheter distally, clean the hub alternately with povidonidine and 70% alcohol, and aspirin, aspirate urine collected in the hub with syringe. Any other sample from catheterized patients is not uh, good for processing. For blood, at least two samples of 10 ml each for ease. Automated commercial systems are um, uh, recommended. I mean, they are good enough for uh, recovering ease, but if you want to recover molds from blood, then lysis centrifugation is the best method. In fact, it is the most sensitive method for recovering histoplasma from blood. For malassezia, if you are expecting in blood, they will not grow if you don't add any olive oil or uh, palmitic acid uh, in, in the culture medium. So you will be missing the diagnosis. For bone marrow, 0.5 ml in pediatric um, blood culture bottle or hepadrenized syringe. So appropriate. Uh, culture media should be used for recovering fungi. Uh, importance of direct examination cannot be overemphasized, and it is the first encounter of the microbes with the microbiologist, and you can report your findings immediately, and put uh, the clinician can put the patient on treatment based even only on that. So this is uh, on the top left is. Uh, Endotrix infection caused by trichophyton violation. To the right is our uh, arthrospores of Blastrochizomyces capitatus uh, in a patient with uh, uh, tracheal carcinoid. And the third one down there is a corneal scrape from patient with fusarium corneal ulcer. Because of the exposure to air many times, um, fungi in cornea may sporulate and give you a clue to their identity. Spores were seen in wet mount, in gram staining, in all preparations from this patient, an elderly patient. This was ureteric urine which was sent to them. Many of the times uh, workers may just feel that it could be contamination and just discard the findings, not uh, give any relevance to them. But history showed that the uh, patient had a huge fungal ball in the renal pelvis, which was exposed to air post-operatively. And uh, this caused the fungus to sporulate and shed the spores in the urine. This culture grew aspergillus tedious from this patient. A florid infection with uh, pityriasis versicolor in a quadriplegic patient. And just the scraping will give you the diagnosis. Uh, Malassezia you can see abundantly in the scrapings and patient was put on itraconazole and because of the extensiveness of the lesion and uh, was uh, recovered. Uh, from patients with burns, now these are the areas which you should, you should collect for fungal culture 
and your uh, efforts will not go uh, fruitless. You will see, uh, if it is a fungal infection, you will definitely see fungal hyphae there. Patient with histoplasmosis cutaneous, uh, with cutaneous lesion, a leukemic patient came to us and uh, bone marrow also showed histoplasma intra um, cellular yeast, narrow neck buds and culture by lysis centrifugation of blood. So not only bone marrow, blood will also show growth of histoplasma capsulatum if you use lysis centrifugation um, method. The problem with opportunistic fungi is that whether, uh, it's dif sometimes difficult to distinguish whether it is colonization or infection, uh, like these samples from respiratory tract, sinuses, gut, urine, skin, etc. Sinuses, the ENT surgeons uh, very often observe that post-operatively, where they have operated on the sinus, there will be a crust formation and there will be uh, an obvious mold growth like you see on a slice of bread, mold obvious like that, or growing on the operated side. But since there is no invasion of mucosa or anything, these are just the colonizing fungi. And um, we had some, uh, one, uh, some uh, co a couple of such patients. Just removal of this uh, crust with uh, will um, uh, uh, is enough in such patients. So some clues to whether fungus is really causing infection are the repeat isolations, growth at the point of inoculation, multiple colonies of the same fungus, same colonies on multiple uh, media, etc. So, uh, coming to the infection in special hosts, mucormycosis, etc. These diseases, um, uh, especially mucormycosis, is common in diabetes mellitus. Uh, and uh, on pa in patients on dyspareoxamine therapy, uh, even in uh, long-term corticosteroids. The spectrum of fungal infections in HIV are somewhat different from those seen in other uh, patients like neutropenic patients, uh, mucocutaneous candidiasis, cryptococcus. These have, are more or less now in control, even uh, pneumocystosis, due to prophylactic uh, antifungals given. Newer infections which are troubling these patients are emergomycosis, even tyloromyces uh, marnefii, that is tyloromycosis, is uh, raising its heads, uh, head up. Uh, in autoimmune diseases, aspergillosis. In solid organ transplant patients, now the spectrum of fungal diseases also, also is very typical. So we can expect certain infections in certain category of patients. If infection develops within one, one month of uh, surgery of the transplant, it could be pneumocystosis or cryptococcus. Aspergillus is notably rare in this uh, period. One to six months, it is mostly aspergillosis, and after six months, fungal infections is unlikely. In cancer patients, a whole uh, lot of fungi like uh, trichosporon, blastoschizomyces, etc., and also molds can cause infection. Now this was a pediatric case, H, uh, HIV positive, and uh, came with a headache of one month, and uh, also he had pulmonary symptoms, cough. Some skin lesions were there, and capsulated ease uh, was seen in uh, uh, the CSF, Pediatric cryptococcus is rather rare. Even in HIV patients, if you, if you go to see, um, cryptococcus is not that common. But I, I was surprised to see the ease even in sputum sample. I have seen maybe thousands and thousands of uh, sputum samples in uh, nigrosine for 30 years. But I have never seen cryptococcus um, uh, capsulated yeast in respiratory samples. In uh, CSF, we see abundant of them, but not in respiratory samples. But here we can see capsulated yeast and uh, some non-capsulated yeast oval shaped of candida were also seen. We can see them lower down. And the uh, sputum quality uh, was very good, as you can judge from these deeper respiratory uh, epithelial cells. They were not squamous epithelial cells, which you see from upper respiratory tract. 
So Birdsea Dagar, uh, black colonies, very typical of Cryptococcus neoformans, and CDBT medium, that is canavanine, dextrose, uh, bromothymol, blue thymine medium, showed bright orange growth of uh, Cryptococcus neoformans, serotype D. This is a new emerging headache for us, emergomycosis. Some members of this genus, emergomyces, were um, uh, initially classified as uh, MNCA. But MNCA members, they cause most, mostly localized infection. Here, it is a disseminated infection, almost always in patients with some severe immunocompromise, like you have HIV, neutropenia, transplant, hematological malignancies, etc. Reported from many continents, the conidia are present in the soil and they are inhaled and uh, cause uh, lung infection, followed by dissemination. The same pattern you see with uh, almost all the dimorphic fungi. Five species are described. Uh, the em Emergomyces orientalis, Emergomyces africanus, canadensis, europaeus, and pasturianus. Treatment is uh, amphotericin B followed by itraconazole and it is fatal if untreated. Now, should we be concerned about this? Should we know about this fungus disease at all? Yes, because case has been reported in New Delhi in 2019 in Safdarjang Hospital uh, by Dr. Malini Cooper and uh, the case is indigenous. She does not have any history of traveling elsewhere. So, fungus is there and we have to be aware of it. Skin lesions are very common, so also liver spleen affection, uh, lymph node. Uh, it's a dimorphic fungus, so uh, mold at room temperature and yeast at 37 degrees centigrade. Yeast are, un, um, I mean, you can't differentiate them from histoplasma capsulatum histopathologically or my, uh, in microscopically. Uh, narrow neck bud, two to four micron, same as histop histoplasma capsulatum. But on culture, you can identify this fungus. This is uh, uh, the conidiophores are at right angle, and the conidia are numerous and small, single celled, and uh, subglobular. So we need to know morphologies of these fungi to be aware of them. The gold standard has always been culture and histopathology of fungus. But rapid diagnosis is critical, especially when time is important, like you have the invasive fungal infection. So antigen-based diagnosis has become um, uh, very popular now. The uh, beta-D glucan assay for invasive fungal infection, galactomannan assay for invasive aspergillosis, and uh, cryptococcal antigen LFA, la lateral flow, um, assay for cryptococcus. It gives result in 10 minutes and uh, the result is indicated by a positive line. So these, this information helps the clinician to um, manage the patients in terms of what antibiotics, to, uh, antifungus to give, when to give, whether to give or not. You have this, oh, I would have liked this laser pointer to work. Sorry. Now you can see there, GM negative, BDG negative. In such patients, GM negative, BDG negative. All serology is negative. Patient does not have uh, any uh, positive finding on HRCT. Um, uh, or he may be having diffuse infiltrates, which are not uh, very suggestive of fungi. So here, uh, invasive fungal uh, infection is unlikely. You have another uh, uh, situation where GM is positive, galactomannan is positive, BDG is negative. But in, uh, and in, uh, he has signs and symptoms and uh, HRCT nodules. Then patient can be treated as aspergillosis. Another situation where GM is negative, but BDG is positive, and with uh, supporting signs and symptoms and nodules, 
seen in HRCT or consolidations seen in HRCT, then you can treat it as fusariosis. Uh, if uh, both are negative, it can be uh, no uh, uh, IFI, but on HRCT, instead of uh, diffuse infiltrates or normal HRCT, you are seeing nodules. Then you have to treat it as zygomycosis. So your serology and uh, microbiology, um, uh, the culture combined, you can uh, develop strategies for treating uh, the invasive fungal infections. Other non-culture tests which are in uh, use are the direct detection of fungi in tissues, like you have pan-fungal PCR assay, aspergillus PCR assay. T2 system for candidiasis is the only system which is FDA approved for detecting candida in blood cultures. The five common species can be identified, albicans, tropicalis, paracylosis, cruzi, and glabrata. So they can be detected in blood culture by T2 system. RT-PCR has replaced microscopy and uh, fluorescence technology, etc., for pneumocystis in many of the um, uh, advanced laboratories. Malditoff, we are now well aware of this technology. Matrix-associated laser desorption, ionization, time of flight, which can be used for identifying cultures as well as they have a place in um, uh, detecting bioweapons bio, uh, bio also, and also for to detect uh, antifungal resistance uh, in uh, fungi. In situ hybridization, nucleic acid hybridization are being done directly on uh, fungi. So certain fungal tests have been added in uh, 2020 by the WHO as is in the essential diagnostics list. What are they? They are aspergillus antigen, ELISA technique, or uh, lateral flow assay. It can be done on serum or bronchoalveolar lavage for patient for detecting invasive aspergillosis. Aspergillus IgG antibody, ELISA, can be done on serum or plasma for chronic pulmonary aspergillosis. Pneumocystosis, I already told, PCR can be done for, uh, on sputum and bile for pneumocystis pneumonia. Histoplasma antigen test on urine can be done by ELISA for disseminated histoplasmosis in patients who are <coughs> immunocompromised or uh, living in endemic areas. So the challenges and my lecture <laughs> is not seeming to end. So these are the newer challenges. There are life-threatening outbreaks uh, reported in literature due to exerohylum uh, rostratum. Now, this particular uh, outbreak was in, uh, reported in 2012-13 across 20 states in uh, USA. 700-plus uh, meningitis cases were reported, fungal meningitis, due to this fungus. And what was the cause? It was contaminated injection of methylprednisolone given to the patient. Another recently reported out such outbreak is due to Sarocladium kilinzae in 2016, where contaminated injections of um, an anti-nausea drug given to cancer patients, uh, Ondensetron, that former particular pharmaceutical company was responsible. So one has to be aware of this, and we need to have an infrastructure to quickly identify and uh, report such things. Candida auris, we all know the multi-drug resistant um, uh, fungus causing havoc all over the country and where uh, resistance is the norm rather than um, sensi sensitivity to antifungals. Candida glabrata, uh, the azole resistant and echinocandin uh, uh, resi uh, resistant strains, multi azole resistant candida tropicalis, pan azole resistant Aspergillus fumigatus is being reported um, um, mostly in Europe because of the in indiscriminate use of azoles in agriculture. So azole resistant aspergillus fumigatus is another threat. Dermatophytosis resistant cases has, uh, are being complained of by the dermatologists, but uh, unfortunately not enough work is being done on them. 
whole genome sequence typing is essential for these tracing these outbreaks. Now, new fungi, new species are being reported all the time. This was our first report from India, uh, Saxenia erythrospora. Now, uh, I suspected this fungus because they were, uh, the spores of the Saxenia were little erythrocyte-like, biconcave. So, the uh, culture was sent for molecular identification to the Netherlands, and it was confirmed and published. Rhinosinusitis caused by Saxenia. It was the third case. It's the third case in the world. Now, other fungus-like organisms are chlorella and prototheca. Chlorellosis, uh, 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 chlorella chlorophyll-containing algae, it's a food supplement. It was thought to be a, uh, a substitute for food in drought-affected countries and during wartime. And mass production of this chlorella is going on in many areas of the world. But it has, to, uh, it has been found that the cells may have some endotoxin, gram-negative like, and some human wound infection cases, peritonitis cases, have been reported due to these fungi, the um, algae, fungus-like. Prototheca, it is a non-chlorophyllous uh, probable mutant of uh, chlorella. Again, Zophi and Prototheca vicarhami are the two uh, species. Vicarami is more common in humans, and uh, it can cause typically uh, olecranon bursitis and algemia. So this is chlorella. Uh, the patient was uh, admitted with a knee wound infection, and he uh, had a bicycling accident, and he fell into uh, water, fresh water, dam water. And the culture grew Aeromonas hydrophila and such bright green colonies on Sabarod Zagar turned out to be chlorella. So uh, these are single cells with lot of chlorophyll. Prototheca, this is our isolate from nail. Uh, Morula-like structures are seen, non-budding. And uh, you can see the internal uh, sporulation. Uh, on uh, agar colonies are yeast-like, but just a little rough. So they are also implicated in human disease. Now, the problem with this fungi is uh, though they are very uh, colorful and very attractive and that is why I have also taken up mycology, but the problem is summarized in this uh, uh, lecture which Dr. Neil Gow is uh, supposed to deliver in uh, the forthcoming ESHAM conference, International Society of Human and Animal Mycology from uh, in uh, September. Uh, so, uh, the, the title is Banging Our Head Against the Fungal Wall. I think it summarizes everything. So, we need better understanding about strengths and weaknesses of our current diagnostics. Uh, PCR-based diagnostic uh, tests are to be looked at uh, for a future. Uh, of special concern are the serious fungal infections like invasive ones. And no single, presently at least, this is the situation that no single method can be relied upon for diagnosis. And uh, it is now based on both traditional as well as non-culture tests for invasive infections. So overcoming present challenges, uh, novel, uh, we need some novel approaches. What does the future, uh, what do we see in the future is much of the funds and efforts of prestigious institutes like CDC are now being directed towards the microbiome research. Microbiome is the normally occurring microbial flora on and in the patient's body, especially in the lungs and gut. So it is uh, researched that this, gut, uh, this flora is very heavily responsible for allowing the resistant fungal strains to, um, uh, to uh, reside as well as cause infection in patients who are especially vulnerable. So manipulating this microbiome is, uh, uh, is what now could be the uh, 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 strategy, treatment strategy in future, signature microbiome treatments or management or whatever. So this is what is uh, exciting all the microbiologists. 
uh, I thank you for a patient listening. I again uh, pay my tribute to all my Gurujan, including Madam Devdhar and stalwarts like Dr. Jahagirdar and uh, others, all my seniors, my technicians who have always helped me, um, always uh, being enthusiastic in uh, adopting newer technologies, my residents who are like sponges absorbing all what their teachers tell, and all the uh, staff, and I thank my institute also, uh, Lokpal Nitirak Municipal Medical College, um, my alma mater. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Uma Tendulkar, for your very okay. elaborate work and the presentation. Thank you. Now I request uh, Dr. Uh, Jagirdar to go give a few comments and conclude the session. Dr. Jagirdar. We are already jumping on the time, and uh, I will only say it was the most complete presentation in the domain of mycology, and it is a very learning experience for everybody. Thank you, Uma, for all this wonderful effort. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, madam. Now I request Dr. Rajesh Karya Karte uh, to come upon and felicitate Dr. Jagirdar. Now I request Dr. Smita Deshpande to felicitate Dr. Leena Devdhar, madam. I request all the delegates to be seated in the hall. We are proceeding immediately for the inauguration ceremony. We are immediately starting with the inauguration ceremony. So I request all of you to be seated. Please don't go. The tea will be served here. So thank you. I request President IMM Maharashtra Chapter, Dr. Nina Nagdev, Secretary Dr. Anuradha Deshmukh, and Treasurer Dr. Rajendra Shurpam to come on the dais for the inaugural function. Dean BJGMC Dr. Kale and Deputy Dean BJGMC Dr. Tambe to be on the dais for the ceremony. Parts of Maharashtra for the conference. Today is an International Microbiologist Day, and I would say it's a perfect day to start the conference. We will start the function today by Saraswati Vandana, sung by Dr. Shailusha. Good morning. Om Ya Kundendu Tushara Haradhavala Ya Shubhra Vastra Vrita Yashweta Padma Sana Ya Brahma Chuta Shankara Prabhriti Bhedeva 
सदा वंदिता सा पातु सरस्वती भगवती निशेष जाड्यापा Thank you, Dr. Shailusha. Chief guest of today's function is Dr. Vinayak Kale, Dean, B.J. Government Medical College, Pune. He did his undergraduation from VMGMC, Solapur, and MD in Psychiatry from the same institute. He is having an extensive teaching experience starting from 1991 as an assistant professor to professor in psychiatry. He has vast administrative experience of more than 15 years. He has worked as a state coordinator for establishing learning disability clinics in Maharashtra. Also has been a state coordinator for PG medical education. He has guided many postgraduate psychiatry students and fellowship students in neurodevelopmental pediatrics. He himself is a researcher and various research publications in eminent national and international journals are on his account. I request organizing secretary, Dr. Rajesh Karyakarte, to welcome Dr. Vinayak Kare. Guest of honor for today's function is Dr. Murlidhar Tambe, Vice Dean and Professor of Community Medicine at BJ Government Medical College, Pune. He has huge teaching experience of 32 years. 79 research publications are on his name. He has delivered many lectures as a resource faculty in various workshops. Dr. Tambe has completed many research projects and few are currently ongoing. He is a guide and mentor to many postgraduate students. I request Dr. Deshpande, organizing, Joint Organizing Secretary, to felicitate Dr. Murlidhar Tambe. I request Dr. Vinayak Kale to welcome President IMA Maharashtra Chapter Conference, Dr. Nina Nagdev, working as Professor and Head, Department of Microbiology, as NKP Salve Institute of Medical Sciences and Research Center and Lata Mangeshkar Hospital, Nagpur. I request Dr. Murlidhar Tambe to felicitate Dr. Anuradha Deshmukh, Secretary, who is currently working as Consulting Microbiologist at Kingsway Hospital, Nagpur. I request Organizing Secretary Dr. Rajesh Karyakarte to welcome Dr. Rajendra Shurpam, Treasurer, who is working as Professor and Head, Department of Microbiology, Chandrapur. I 
I request all the dignitaries on the dais to come forward for lamp lighting ceremony. Souvenir of the conference will now be released by the hands of Chief Guest Dr. Vinayak Kale. I request all the souvenir team to be on the dais for the release. Sir, I to click on sir. I request Dr. Kale to please inaugurate the poster session. It is e-release, so you just have to click from here. Thank you, sir. It's been a while, a long while, I would say, that we all have been together for the conference. COVID pandemic made us work hard, heavy, and literally 24 by 7. But at the same time, it has made microbiology as one of the leading branch in medical field. RT-PCR, which was restricted to few laboratories, being highly skilled test, became a routine diagnostic test. And now, we are on the verge of setting new horizons in the field of epidemiology using nucleic acid sequencing. So the theme of the conference is molecular epidemiology. I request Dr. Rajesh Karyakarte to brief about the theme of the conference. Thank you very much. I've been very lucky. I got uh, two of the guests who are here, Dr. Vinay Kale sir and Dr. Tambe sir. They were here with me yesterday too. 
when we had our hands-on workshop, a pre-conference hands-on workshop. So on both the days they are here, and I thank them both here very much. My colleague, Dr. Smita Deshpande, um, she is uh, very active and has been the in charge of uh, academic activities of the whole conference. Then uh, we have uh, my co counterpart here now, Dr. Nina Nagdev, the president of uh, Maharashtra chapter of IMM, and Dr. Anuradha Deshmukh, the secretary, and uh, my close friend, Rajendra Surpam. It's very important to take his name, and that is because uh, when uh, we had that particular occasion, I think last year, when we used to have uh, bi-weekly video conferences by our doc uh, Dr. Lahane sir, the director. So we all microbiologists used to meet each week, twice weekly, and we used to have that, that fantastic uh, sort of video conferencing which were done by then director Dr. Lahane. Now that was really remarkable what he did. And in that particular, one of the, uh, one of the video conferences, uh, Dr. Lahane, we thought was not there. And all the professors were there on the screen. And I said, I welcomed then all the, all the uh, professors of all medical colleges who were participating in that particular uh, video conference that uh, we have a conference uh, this year, so please come. So, because the, I think there was a bit reduction in the numbers of uh, SARS-CoV-2. So he was the one who said that he's not going to tolerate any online conference. He wants an offline conference and he has to come to Pune for many things other than academic feasts, right? So yeah, so it was mainly him who told me that no, you will have to, let it be not this year, we'll take the conference next year, but in the next year you will have to have it offline. So thanks to BA.2.75, we are a bit mm, uh, low numbers now, and uh, still I would advise everybody to wear the mask, right, being a microbiologist. But, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, yes, sir, yes. So with these uh, introductory words about them, let me introduce the uh, theme of this particular conference. It is molecular epidemiology. Uh, we thought that this particular field is a very nascent field in our country, and that nascent field came into existence because the large scale sequencing activity, which was possible in India and uh, under the ages of INSACOG. Particularly, Maharashtra has excelled in sequencing. We have all the maximum number of labs which do sequencing in Maharashtra itself. We have uh, BJ Medical College doing it, we have NIV doing it, we have NCCS, we have ICER, we have, uh, we have NCL doing it. So at least five of the labs in the country which do sequencing are in Pune. And therefore, um, we thought that maybe this is the future, this is the future in epidemiology. That is why I, what I said to Dr. Tambe, who is the professor of uh, community medicine, that future seems to be sequencing and molecular epidemiology. We have seen what has happened with Zika. Uh, we, we know when monkeypox ha is trying to enter, we know how important sequencing is. And we saw it in a large number with, uh, with uh, SARS-CoV-2. Uh, we have been uh, successful in sequencing, coordination of sequencing about 35,000 samples. So that was the number and that was the thing which we thought that we will focus everything now on molecular epidemiology. And if you see very carefully, all the doyens of sequencing are sitting together down there, three of them, Dr. Anurag, Dr. Sridhar, and Dr. Vinod. All three are the doyens of sequencing. And I'm so, so happy that all three of them have come for this conference. Thank you very much, sir. It's, it's, it's making me so proud of myself. So, <laughs> yeah, so that is great. There's one more Doyen who is sitting with us, and uh, he's sitting right in front, uh, Dr. Justin. Uh, he prefers to call himself Professor Justin, and Professor Justin is here with me. Uh, he is a professor of uh, microbiology. 
He is a PhD in microbiology, but his work is totally dedicated to clinical microbiology. He is the one who devises different kits, and he is right now making a very advanced kit for diagnosis of tuberculosis, and it is in making. He is going to discuss that particular thing during the conference. The first lecture is going to be his. So my request to all, please don't go to for taking tea at all. The lectures you are going to get is a feast any microbiologist would like to devour. So please don't leave the hall. This is really a fantastic team which I have. I cannot forget one more person who is there. And uh, where is he? Anoop? Dr. Anoop Anvika? Maybe somewhere. Good day, Anoop. Oh, yeah, is there. Dr. Anoop Anvika is the director of NIB. And NIB has been instrumental in giving permissions to all the kits uh, which were used in uh, uh, COVID, all the biologicals which are used in COVID, all monoclonal antibodies which would ever come in India would be permitted by him. So uh, such a big VIP is here. He's going to talk, but then he, he, he sits at the back there. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so he's, he's here. Uh, Kare sir, I would like to tell you that uh, we had two very important sessions before the inauguration. Uh, three, rather three important sessions. Uh, and these uh, important sessions are, one is uh, Dr. P.M. Khare Award paper presentation, uh, where the best paper uh, is given the prize, and we select out the papers. Only three papers have a chance to be presented. Then uh, we had the presidential oration. We had Dr. Nina Nagdev doing it. And then uh, the most prestigious of all, I have uh, Dr. Uma Tendul Karia. She had the Hardas Patak oration hour. So these were the programs which we had. So I think the whole, uh, uh, all the members of IMM and all the delegates would now be very clear, it would be very clear to you that we are talking of sequencing, we are going to talk of molecular epidemiology, and I personally feel it is the future of microbiology. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.